what I'm going to talk today, my talks of yesterday and day before made it easy and also made me think what do we think, know about mechanics? Do we relate that all the time to mortuary practices or the place where the geological formations are there, but there has never been a query so-called physical query, people still making different kind of tools, grinding stones, but they are also part of the megalith. And what goes behind the megalith? It's not only erecting a stone, but what are the social connotation and what are the taboos and how it differ from community to, com to community or this is one thing which is common for all Nagas. Uh, many a time I read many paper where even if I do write about that, the identity. Identity, then inside that we do talk of it's not Naga identity, community identity. Whereas when it comes to megalithic, it becomes a Naga identity. Uh, it could be also said that it will become a much, much larger perspective in that. And I would start with Next one. Fine. Uh, for those people who are not familiar with the uh, geography of the Naga hills, I never call it as a Naga land because this Naga land is a political boundary political geographical boundary created by the present government sitting in Delhi and Rangoon. They have never been to the borders when the border was marked. So in the Naga Hill, you find about the people living in Myanmar and Assam. Then you have Arunachal Pradesh, Manipur, all together, there are about 30 communities, though officially there are 14. But if you record them, there are 30 communities and it may keep on increasing and many a time also some subgroups in recent past also last year, there was a subgroup of 1000 people in the Manipur, they want to escape themselves as a Nagas. But then who, who decides who are Nagas? There must be a cultural element who should decide, nothing else would decide that. And then Okay, fine. I gave you a um, aims of antiquity of megalith and Naga hills. And then I do talk about continuity of megalith tradition, technology adapted to detach the megalith from the natural formation in the interior area and stone pulling through the hill and symbolism of megaliths. Antiquity of uh, megaliths is a very difficult task to dealt upon not much work has been done other than saying there are variety of megaliths. Uh, the not archaeological sites are not related to megalith per se to decide antiquity. We have saying that many people talk about say iron age thing. Many people talk about say living tradition. Then when it is a living tradition, finding the antiquity becomes more difficult in a region. And I knowingly I have put a uh, photograph which is made of wooden carving. Before this megalithism was there, people must have erected number of pillars made of organic material. And those pillars might have gone through the same process what the stone megaliths are going through today. We have no record of those except a few which are existing for last 100 years or of the colonial record which has been described as in most cases, they are fertility posts. And I also bring uh, three elements. That's your, what is, we call it signifiers, signified and sign. All the Nagas, they do identify themselves with certain term of signifier and signifier, but what remains in their mind, how they, they relate to the object is we call it signified, is the mental consciousness. And that signified, we never understand because that is a variable. 
where a sign and signify we do understand but when you call about signify that only a naga would be able to tell rather than only but whereas we talk of signifier that when we go as anthropologist we do the signifier whereas the signified is the concept which is such a variable such a dynamic that it would require the indigenous nagas to come up and answer that in due course of time whereas the sign is the association of both the signified and the signified and we have written number of books called naga identities and the naga identities are written not even by nagas not even by indians or of southeast asia people but people sitting in germany or people sitting in us if they talk about naga identity i have to question myself they do come as a traveler and most of the things which could tell us the origin and migration of nagas are today not in naga hills but in different museums had had there not been anything called mega i think there would have been nothing in the naga hills today to know their past the mega thing when i say because the mega things which they could not lift the people who colonized that naga hills they could not lift the mega things so they are standing today and through that we would be able to know or we will try our best to decipher who are nagas but to answer who are nagas the objects have been moved without any contextual details and what you see there are about 274 uh, stone tools in petrivers museum alone and there are four stone tools in kohima state museum and uh, then we do have shoulder cells we do have cells but that's not the beginning uh, um, unfortunately we do not have a hand axe chopper chopping cleavers in nagaels age of now we do have certain microliths but that microliths could be part of tool making rather than a microlithic age that still remains a subject of discussion and what is not shown there is what they couldn't lift and what they couldn't lift also comes in a two part what is organic and one is inorganic part and this organic part comes if you are able to take 50000 objects from naga hills the representation of that 50000 objects from the naga hills or if i say for an example petrivers museum has got about 6000 odd objects from the naga hills but they do not have the most important thing of the naga culture that's the log drum or representation of their house if you do not have the space in the museum if you do not have the capability of representing our own culture then do not represent us in a fragmented way no museum has got right to only display the things that makes us object of curiosity rather than object of our knowledge what knowledge system naga said that has never been displayed but object of curiosity what makes people to think they are wild has been displayed for last 200 years is not only so it's time if you could make indian american big pillars or you can take can you from the uh, oceanic world to different museum and that has been displayed where we worked in the let it be petrivers or let it be uh, ethnologist museum across the europe then they also should have a space for this beautiful naga house or naga log drum which reflects not only the art and knowledge but it gives the history of last 500 year at least because it's on the basis of the fertility the owner had got to that village fertility in the form of grain fertility in the form of saving the village fertility in the form of showing the valor fertility in the form of cultivation everything is related to the knowledge system that has that you cannot represent then really i pardon myself that you shouldn't represent anything of the naga culture it's not only colorful and then what they have, they have also taken are certain stone stool and hardly people know that nagas made the stone pot nagas made the stone grinder and certain hammer stone even if this part are now with the antique dealers what you are seeing in the chuck piece is written it's meant for different medium and what you have is the anvil is there and this persons are also not uh, in the naga hills anymore then it's not the nagas raised only megaliths it's not only 
now that's the work on the megalith. They made the stone tools. They made the fortification of the stone, which probably after the Harappan, if somebody did a stone fortification of that grandeur, is in the Naga Hill. And those all are made by breaking the stone using certain kind of hammer like this. This hammer is again in the ethnology museums of Berlin or museum across the world. And what we collected are the games. Now in the Konoma, you have one set of games and most of the museum have dozens of those games. And what they couldn't collect is this mega stones because they are too heavy to lift. Because that had the knowledge system of Nagas, which could have been displayed in much better way, but the representation idea was wild. Idea was make the representation a object of obscurity. Don't make it that what Naga knew their culture. And in that area, if you look at it, it's not uh, what we associate ourselves to the megalithic study is always the mortuary practices. And how the people have detached those stones. That area which hardly used any metal until recent past. And they, how, how are they detaching these big, big stones? And how are they pulling through the hills? Because that area is known as hilly terrain, forested area. How are they pulling through that? That remains still a sort of mystery. And what you see is now the mortuary megaliths are, you can make it in every village where you go, you have this uh, graveyard, and this is his son, father's grave, and in every village you get. But many of them are used today for washing cloth, for grinding masala, making stone, or playing game. And you can see, making the clay powder, playing game, and washing the cloth. That's, that's not what it was meant for. That was a stone of a hero, a warrior, the person who got the fertility to them. So how far we, have, we are talking of heritage, and then we do have association of grave and memorials as in the form of stone, you would see there are cyst burial, and there is stone, which are a mega stone under which the skulls are being kept age of time. Then you have also sitting platforms. Those have got nothing to do with mortuary and I'm not going to show you more use of the megalith because many of the scholars like Tilak and uh, Martin Luther, Larry Lynn have already talked about it. Maybe I will try to write in the paper rather than taking your time. But then those uh, sitting platforms are only were only meant for heroes. That was not meant for commoner. If, even if I was, I am sitting, it's the wrong thing to do that. That is meant for you. We go and discuss about the megalith. We take the size, we say from where they have got it, but we really do not understand those stones were also meant for the people who brought certain things, certain valor to the village. And today you also have certain, in certain part of the Naga Hills, uh, one is in the Manipur. I would not take the uh, village name, considering I do not want to make it a tourist place as of now. And uh, then you have places like this where the stone, the megaliths are there on which the hedontic ceremony used to take place. And you have villages where you have also a fort in the Konoma. People had made this fort, save the entire Konoma from the onslaught of the Britishers for 50 years. And they also have certain places where you have these staircases, not certain places, most of the villages, they because of the uh, headhunting tradition, the certain villages made in a different terrain. And those terrains also, the steps are made of bigger megalis. And in now it comes how they should be touched. Can you see one stone? The, it's not that they were not detaching from natural formation. They would try plug it and thoroughly they'll break it and the upper portion becomes the megalith. You can see this behind the shadow, you can see the mark. Still left over. And 
it's not like the knowledge about rock was limited to megalith but those nagas they do make pottery out of making pounding the rocks of soft rocks of course it's not they be they do have the knowledge about the different rock and now mm, how are they pulling uh you come to a place like in 2016 i happened to be in the kohima for a exhibition rather for that small book release function and there was a stone pulling ceremony wherever you go everybody are well dressed and all the nagas have their identity as part of their costume the costume itself talks of which nagas they are you will see uh, the na people the mm, <coughs> the males having different earlobes everybody helping each other and all the um, bracelets vestment and the <coughs> vestment everything are of different character and you see the it's not only men the women and the women also having certain food and rice beer and certain ceremonial costumes of the naga throughout the kohima then you ask yourself why today suddenly everybody are so much of decorated with their costumes and this costume they do still wear it they still they do still respect it and they feel that's their identity then you go little ahead you also see different kind of salts which otherwise you would see in the coffee table book or in the museums then uh, then also you see uh, the people with headgears which again you see in the capital and they are in masses they are in thousands why thousands of nagas are wearing like that do you think they were paid for it? it's not a political rally but their association and the sacredness to a event which is going to take place to that event it's a community event is not a event of a family but a event of what is called naga and you will see that in the people who well decorated then with all those heavy costumes you also see uh, the part which has certain mark which you will never get in archaeology is the mark of wooden thing something getting pulled is that leaves on the road something getting pulled heavy thing getting pulled without a wheel without a cart without a chariot and you also see the route and there on the road side okay that's interesting and the secret remains here the stone are pulled this heavy stones are pulled and they are made by nagas the path on which they can pull it you see there is nothing called wheel but everything is tied with the different roots and this rope is a modern thing otherwise you see everything is tied with different tree roots and organic form and then you also see next thank you 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 see the contribution of community and this community this is the person who has Uh, assign this stone pulling ceremony and you have all the stressed people and uh, entire road you have hundreds of people pulling that stone together and all of them dressed with their own community dress and then you have it's not only main job it's the more of a women job than a main job because the men who are pulling to them continuous feeding continuous giving of rice beer continuous giving of different the cuisines are done by the women and all of them are also dressed with their own clothes set next you can see this mega stones that we pull you and you also can see how they are pushing from behind next i'll show you a small video can you play the video this is Yeah. 
So one can see the person is sitting, standing on the stone, is giving the direction how to pull it, and he's also giving the direction where to stop it. So the stone pulling is always a community act. And this stone with thousands of people pulling it together can go through any hill, any forest, any stone barrier. And next. And uh, okay, I will leave it. And today, uh, the stone which are okay. Next, you go to one slide is behind. Oh, goodness, fine. Uh, uh, and what is there would never if these all objects which the ornaments which you saw in different museums today you would never know their functional meaning. Many of these ornaments were only meant for stone pulling ceremony. Many of the ornaments were only meant for head hunting. Many of the ornaments were only meant for fertility and were meant for wild cultivation takes place. And when these materials are collected and kept in different museums as a showpiece has got no detail. It would never help us understanding the gap in the anthropology. Today we have this memorial stones as no parking and also as a nameplate in many part of the Naga Hills. It is our duty as a learned heritage representative to keep them protected until the locals the indigenous people pick up the subject well and understand the variable and dynamic meaning. Till then, it's our role to keep them protected. 